Good evening and welcome to the third program in the series, the debate series on corruption. This series selects seven very important national issues, mainly arising from projects initiated by the government of Guyana. And these issues have been surrounded by a good deal of corruption, a good deal of controversy arising out of charges of corruption. We intend to highlight these issues over a series of seven debates with the hope that they will be analyzed and the public duly informed. This is the third in the series and we focus our discussion on the Chedijagan International Airport expansion project and the charges of corruption. Our intention is to engage and debate every issue regarding this project with the aim of separating the facts from the propaganda and looking at all the controversy and all the explanations and the facts surrounding the issue. I am Al Crichton and with me are members of quite a distinguished panel. We have with us this evening Mohammed Irfan Ali, the Honorable Minister of Housing and Water, Mr. Ronald Webster, Chairman of the Private Sector Commission, Mr. Ramesh Gere, our specialist for tonight's, for tonight's issue and CEO of the Chedijakan International Airport, Timeri, the Honorable Minister of Public Works, Transport and Hydraulics, Robson Ben, and Mr. Gerard Ramsaroop, exec executive member of the Alliance for Change. Now, we are going to begin our examination of the Chedijagan International Airport Expansion Project and the charges of corruption that surround it. We want to begin by getting a clear understanding of what this project is. And we are going to ask our expert on tonight's panel, Mr. Ramesh Gear, to tell us exactly what is this Chedijagan International Airport Expansion Project. Thank you, Mr. Crichton. Uh, good evening. The Chedijagan International Airport became a semi-autonomous agency in October 2001. At that time, the airport was being subsidized by the government of Guyana because it could not have generated enough revenue to meet its expenditure um, to run the facilities. At the time also, the facility processed approximately 300,000 passengers per annum. With the increases in both passenger and cargo movement over the years, by the end of this year, 2012, we anticipate to process 500,000 passengers. That is a 66% increase from 2001. This vast increase in passenger means that the existing facility is put under strain. And we have seen evidence of it in the past few uh, peak season, where when aircraft at times come into land, they have to park on the taxiway instead of the international apron so that passenger can disembark. And that's away from the terminal. The car park facilities over uh, flows at times and on the departure side, the terminal building, we have a lot of congestion. Um, so much so that despite the increase in staff, the increase in the number of immigration customs officers, we're still unable to process passengers in an efficient and timely manner. Thus resulting at times in the aircraft uh, flights being delayed. If one was to look ahead, the Airport Council International and International Civil Aviation Organization predict that passengers will continue to grow to a rate of 4 to 5% per annum. It means that within the next 20 years, we'll have double amount of passenger traveling. And in this particular region, the Latin Caribbean region, 
will triple by 2030. Right home at CJI, last year alone we had a 7% increase in passenger movement. This year, a 16% increase thus far. The need for the airport expansion is now. Uh, I don't think there's a question of if we need to expand. Um, the evidence is in the numbers and the export and have predicted and we've seen the facts over the years. Um, I will explain a little further yeah, what the, is happening in the region. The program. All right, thank you very much. And we are now going to ask the Honorable Minister Mohamed Irfan Ali to make an opening statement on behalf <coughs> of the government. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Al Crichton. Let me say that this project fits into the realm of projects that the government is programming that would lead to the transformation of our country, that would lead to the creation of wealth, that would lead to the expansion of our economy, that would lead to the creation of jobs. And most importantly, this is one of the projects that would ensure Guyana has that competitive advantage. The world out there is a very competitive environment and we must ensure we have the necessary infrastructure we have the necessary facilities that would give us the competitive advantage. Here is it. We are playing in a very competitive environment to become the major hub for South America. Whilst we are sitting here debating, Suriname has just announced that in addition to the 28 million, they're going to spend a for the 70 million. <clears throat> St. Vincent, small spend St. Vincent is spending $218 million on their uh, airport facility. So this is a project that is necessary, that is important for the expansion of our economic base and the expansion of the revenue generation base for our country. This is a project that will ensure that fits into the overarching development agenda of those transformative projects that will ensure Guyana remains competitive, we continue to create jobs, and we continue to build a strong and vibrant economy. All right, thank you very much. And we are going to continue with opening statements from all the panelists before we get into the, the actual debate of the issues. We, it is my honor then to invite Mr. Ronald Webster, Chairman of the Private Sector Commission, to make his opening remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Crichton. My comments will be made from the standpoint of the Private Sector Commission and the private sector in Guyana. <clears throat> As you may be aware, a significant representat representation on the PSE is the Tourist Association, Manufacturers Association, and the commercial groupings. We feel that there are certain projects which are essential to moving the economy forward. And the airport expansion is one of those projects. The other one, and I might as well mention it because without, uh, is the development of the Port of Georgetown to reduce freight costs because 80% of freight is handled by, by the ocean. But where the airport is concerned, it's an imperative. What Mr. Keir didn't mention was that the runways are only 2,700 meters long. The runways in Piaco are 3,000 plus, I think, 3,200 meters, and Barbados, 3,350 meters. Effectively, the runway at Timeri is a risk and it needs to be extended as a priority, quite apart from the job creation aspect, which is very, very important to the private sector. We must eliminate the risk factor. There needs to be a greater number of parking aprons. There are only four or five. Barbados has, I think, 20, and um, turned out 17. Now, if the airport is to become a hub, as we hope it will, for South America, 
West Africa and through to uh, Venezuela and Colombia, then it's imperative that there be a significant e expansion in the capacity of the airport. But there are a number of issues that need to be addressed in the overall capital cost. Access to and from the airport is going to be important and critical. Fast access, probably to going through to the East Coast. The terminal buildings need to be completely redesigned. Yeah, and, and perhaps we can get into some of those details very good. later on in the, in the discussion. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I now invite the Honorable Robson Ben, uh, Minister of Public Works and Transport and Hydraulics Minister, to make his opening remarks. Well, thank you, Mr. Crichton, for this opportunity. Um, I have some mixed feelings being at such a discussion. I thought that um, the public discussion with respect to the airport project had been properly and formally dealt with in the media. But again, we welcome the opportunity to explain to the public what this project means to Guyana and to Guyana's future. As Minister Irfan Ali explained, this is a critical development project for our country. We depend on air transport to bring into our country or people from the diaspora to have business and economic and other links with the wider world. And we have a lot of connections overseas with business and we are only presented to ourselves through the airport. The airport is a significant hindrance now almost the development if maybe i could use that term to the, the continuing development of guyana because as uh, mr gear pointed out it is now too small the demands for travel and traffic the ergonomics of the airport do not match the demands the growth in traffic in guyana itself regionally and internationally are not matched by the design and the capacity of the airport. Guyana's international airport wasn't selected or happened on the site by chance. The airport at what was previously Atkinson Field and South Dakota Circuit was carefully selected during the war years to present a hub because of Guyana's geographic position to present the movement of aircraft over to West Africa and into Asia for the war effort. It was done under the lead lease agreements between Presidents Roosevelt and Prime Minister Churchill of Great Britain to allow and it played a significant role with respect to the war effort. It allowed for the protection of bauxite shipments, the protection the anti-submarine uh, uh, protection for the Venezuelan iron ore, for the Trinidadian oil, and all of those issues. But significantly, it was the hub in terms of travel distance for aircraft to move aircraft and people to Africa for the war effort and forward into Asia and to and forward into South America. Okay, so significantly, you. You know, let me say significantly, this position, this important geographic position still remains. It's inherent in the position. We have the opportunity to continue to develop and make good of this positioning. All right, it has thank not you. changed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Bird. And now we ask Mr. Gerard Ramsaru, executive member of the AFC, to make his opening remarks. Thank you very much, Mr. Creighton. Um, when Minister Ali refers to the need for uh, expanded airport now. I just wanted to point out that this need um, was made known since 1996. That was when the NDS was first drafted by the Carter Center. It was subsequently modified with input from all. It was subsequently passed by Parliament. It's been about a decade that it's been gathering dust. So to say that we wake up and we have to expand the, the airport now is, is a little... Um, is a little going off. Now, given that it is in the NDS, and given that there was a need for it, there is no objection per se 
to the airport expansion or for that matter for a new airport in principle. The issue here is the manner in which this contract was awarded, is the manner in which this whole thing went about. Minister Ben had indicated that it was the Chinese that came with money in their hand. Subsequently, um, we found out that, well, we were told in the media that it was the Chinese who actually approached the government on the idea. So notwithstanding that it was in the NDS, there was no actual government policy involved here because subsequent to the NDS, you had the poverty reduction strategy and then you, we had the LCDS. There was never any reference to the NDS. So in a nutshell, this thing came up out of the blue. <coughs> Uh, and out of the blue, just, just 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 on a point of correction, Mr. Moderator, mm -hmm. it is unfair for Mr. Gerald to say that this plan was gathering dust. In 1996, it was this PPP civic government mm -hmm. that developed the NDS. Mm -hmm. So we always knew that the airport formed a critical part of the development strategy for our country. Nothing was gathering dust, but you must recall that we were coming from a situation in this country where 96 cents of every dollar earned on a revenue was going to repay debt. We had to find the revenue. And when you say the manner in which the contract was awarded, well, you, you must explain. Yeah. Tell I, us okay, what okay, manner okay. we're talking about. Where is the corruption? Where is the corruption? What is the corruption you're talking about? Uh, yes. Minister Ali, okay, you have um, made your correction on that point. The other points you have you, you will have an opportunity to do, raise them thank you. later on. Let us allow Mr. Ramsrook to complete his opening yes, statement. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Creighton. Um, you know. Now, in this, in, in this thing, there was no feasibility study on the internal rate of return, the return on in investment. There was no cost-benefit analysis, no EPA assessment, no independent design review, no value management survey, no pre-construction estimate to compare it against. Uh, no Mr. mention Moderator, of the payback period. Object. If Mr. Right. Gerard, there is no if Mr. Gerard, record. He no, must no, say no, where is the source. There is he no record. Mr. Ali, Mr. That Ali. That is none of you these things when he does not have okay, a source. Okay, no, Mr. Ali, Mr. Mr. Ali, Ali, you can okay, answer. Okay, now um, just a, a, a second, please. The, the the thing is um okay, I will allow you to to rebut his opening remarks, even though. The whole structure of the program. He's going beyond uh, opening remarks. I allow you to do that when we get into the debate. Mm -hmm. um, just to, to, to jump ahead to satisfy you that you will have your opportunity. Yeah. The first question that I'm going to put to the panel after we, after we, uh, we have mm -hmm. heard the opening statements will focus precisely on that point made by Mr. Ramsarou. So you will have your opportunity. But we Thank have you. to be factual. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. Present yes. our source. Well, yes, this, this is the whole idea. Definitely. What it's I a public present, forum. you, you have to present are, are source. free yeah. to, to rebut it. Now, there is no record that it passed through the Economics Committee of the National Assembly. And not to mention that the procurement process was completely bypassed. So it seems as if this thing was, well, you know, we, we, we have the money. Let us find some way to spend it. That appears how it is. Because the deal was signed behind closed doors. It only became public through the Jamaican press. Now, in addition to that, Ian, I have to object. we must. Yeah, yeah. I have to object with <laughs> with the propaganda that this is a deal. First of all, this is no deal, and this was not signed behind any closed door. As he rightfully pointed out, the the the, the, on, the, the, the member on the panel rightfully pointed out, this is a development strategy that was announced in the national development strategy since 1996. So how can it be something that is behind some closed door? Yeah. When there was a public discussion and public debate All right. on this issue since 1996. We are trying to get through these opening remarks. And as I yeah. said, okay. Minister, Minister, you will have ample opportunity to reply to every single point made by Mr. Ramsaru. Yeah. Thank just, you very much. I mean, Mr. Crichton, please. I am making the point to the public that really there is no objection in principle. What is objected to here is the manner in which we went about, um, well, Chinese engaged us, the manner in which we responded, and how it is ongoing. That is the yeah. issue here. Now, I wanted to, to, uh, I, I just to right. point out, okay. I want us to uh, remember, no, no, please, no, no, that this right. is a loan. No, let me just make it clear. This is a loan. You're talking about U.S. $150 million. Remember the Skeldon factory, $200 million? And then we spent, I think, an additional... Your figure's wrong to start with. Mm -hmm. Right. Your figure's wrong. Monies were spent additionally no, your figure's wrong. Okay. Now, with all due respect, we are talking a loan. 
it is the opposition's role to scrutinize what the government is doing, right. to see that the government, that the people of Guyana gets the best value for the money. That is the purpose of it. All right. Thank you, Mr. Ramsarouk. We are now going to go to our first break. <laughs> and when we come back, we get into the debate of those issues which have been raised. Thank you. Okay, we were having some technical difficulties. It says, good evening to the panelists and everyone at home watching. My question is for any of the government representatives on tonight's program. Has, has the government, has the government secured the U.S. 141 million soft loan from China Exim Bank which forms a substantial part of the funding for this project. That's the first question. Then John Wilbert, on any given day, what is the level of traffic at the CJIA that would warrant an expansion? My estimation is that the only time there are significant arrivals is on the two final Caribbean airline flights in the evenings. What therefore warrants such an urgency to expand, even in the light of flights? Now going to Ogle. Yolanda Charles, good night folks. Guyana is a truly blessed country and we have long moved from the very dark period in our history. The critics are in overdrive trying to discredit anything that moves. They had their chance, though never put there by the people of Guyana. Yet they keep forcing themselves on the people. Is no good enough. Great. And those are the three comments that we have coming in so far. Kindly stay tuned with us as we bring you another update from the Feedback Desk. Thank you very much, Stacey. And now we come into the actual debate on this issue of the expansion <coughs> of the Chedi Jagan International Airport and the charges of corruption which have surrounded it. We are going to proceed in, in basically in, in, in debate fashion, but what we, what we are doing is I might or I might not direct a, quest a question to a specific member of the panel. When I don't do that, any member of, of the panel may come in to respond. The other thing is that any points made by a member of the panel, the others will have an opportunity to rebut. They, we prefer if the rebuttal comes at the end of that statement. But in the cut and thrust of debate, we are going to allow uh, responses and rebuttals of statements made by any member of the, of, of the panel. We are, I have introduced the members of the panel. I just want to make the point that, uh, the, that our Partnership for National Unity had been invited to be represented in these discussions, and in fact we did have ample representation from APNU in the first debate. But unfortunately, we do not have a representative of the APNU this evening. And we are hoping that in future debates, we will have them filling the chair left uh, reserved for them. Let, let us now turn to what Mr. Ramsarup has pointed to as the main objection to this project. And that is the way in which he phrased it, the manner in which the government went about the project and the manner in which they, made about, they, they went about making what he described as a secret deal. I will now invite responses to that charge. I'd like to um, <coughs> respond to what I view as a fairly ridiculous comment about secret deals. The Ministry of Public Works on behalf of the government of Guyana normally meets with various project development with respect to projects on our prioritized lists. These lists for large projects over the years have moved from the Amila Falls project. Now we are talking about, as Mr. Webster did say just now, about the, uh, the deep water port and the issues of the, the Marara Harbor. 
we have a project in respect of the uh, Demerara, a new Demerara River Bridge. We have a project which we've just completed, the final feasibility study and are examined with respect to the Linden Letem Road. When companies approach the government and they are uh, rooted to us, we have discussions. We show them our project list, our development list. People come with all kinds of, uh, some want us to find the money to finance a project. Some come with proposals for boots, build, own, operate, transfer us with the Barbies River Bridge. We entered into discussions with respect to several projects with a particular uh, uh, project company here, China Harbors, since 2010. And those discussions, after initial discussions, where they examined a variety of, of the projects which we had on our rust, as it were, they came back with the one which they figured and we agreed to was one which could be looked at and we said we had no objections for them developing, looking, examining the pre-feasibility and feasibility of the project. Several en encounters occurred between ourselves in the government, in our engineering services group, and that company. So this is nothing new. This is the way it is done with respect to the approaches, the engagement with companies. Okay, thank you, with, Mr. Ali. No, let, let, me, let me just oh, say, the issue of a secret deal and engagement. We had the opportunity, based on the presentations from the company with respect to this project, and I want to say that we do have a feasibility study done That's in right. the ministry and a final proposal out of several done on engagements between the ministry and the company with respect to the project. And in fact, I think the first number I remember with respect to this project was some 181 million United States dollars. And uh, the engagement really torrid, feel sometimes brought down the project costing, I think, to somewhere 150 million dollars. Yeah, well, well 138 uh, based on the financing end. We had the imperative at a certain point in time where we there was the third China CARICOM economic summit where we had the visit of a Chinese vice premier, no less a person than His Excellency Wang Qishan in September 2011 in Port of Spain and where the prime ministers and the presidents of the CARICOM countries went to engage with uh, the vice premier on project financing for important projects that China was willing to finance for the Caribbean. Okay. The only project we had ready then, which we figured we could have gone to and could have gotten an arrangement and understanding was this project. And we had to do it. Okay. We Thank had to do much. it. I, I, would, I would want to point out too that typically loans on a Chinese Exim Bank financing may range somewhere in the order to 2.5%. 2, 2 We've had the Huawei projects the GPL projects, uh, even the skeleton factory projects, which I think are of the order of that project financing. If we went to commercial financing for this project, we would not be paying 25 or even 3%. We'll be probably be paying 10 or 12%. Okay. Internationally, it would be LIBOR plus 2.5 or 3, which would take it to 10, 12%. All right, and we you, would have to much. find mm -hmm. some $250 million more only to pay off the expenses on the product against on commercial rates. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Ben. Yes. Yeah, if, if, if I may, um, with all due respect to the minister, um, the studies were done. And also... As well, thank you, thank you very much. With, thank you for saying that the studies well, were let done. Me, let me um, continue, please. As Minister Ali was also referring to the, the, um, the NDS. Now, if you have these studies, and the NDS said since 1996, Mrs. Phil Philomena Sahoy visited that area, promised the, the community north of the airport where the expansion is going to, to regularize the community. That is one point since then. Second issue is that you have all these feasibilities being done, but only, I understand last week, the environmental impact assessment was being done, and we know soil tests were done after the, the signing of the contract. Moreover, you have the ILS, 
which was commissioned in February of this year, when the contract was signed in November of last year. That ILS now has to be moved to accommodate the expansion of the, the runway. So, of course, this Should begs, we not this have begs, an ILS? Okay, okay. This, that's, that's this begs the question. No, no, no. Let him complete, please. Let him complete, please, and then I will ask you to... Yeah. to respond. Right. Yes. This begs the question as to what exactly is being studied and how these things are being done. And understand, the, my issue with this is not the airport contract in isolation. It is the record of the government. You look at the Skeldon factory, the Enmore packaging plant, all the things that is going on. As a matter of fact, Nissel is, is, is the facilitator of this thing. Mr. Nissel, Mr. Chairman, with due right? respect, we're here to discuss the CGIA yes. okay. expansion right. is right. is right. is where the I will accept, It is I will where my concerns all right. come, come from. Okay. I so I have to explain where I'm coming from, yes, Mr. Price. I will Price. accept that point. I will accept that point that the other issues like Nissil like mm -hmm. are subject for future debates. Yeah. Let us concentrate No, but Nissil is involved. Mr. Chairman, yes. can, yes. I, can I speak? So, no, um, Mr. Ali. Uh, and this is what we are having. The opposition, especially the AFC, continues to try to derail issues. Here is it that we are discussing corruption yeah. and the airport. Nissil is corruption. They cannot bro. wait. They cannot raise anything on corruption Sorry. on the airport. But when they go out here, they're going to go to the media and raise all kinds of issues. Let me say this. When you come to the NISL debate, they will tell you about the airport. Here is it that we are on this ground to debate your, your charges of corruption. Where is the corruption? What is the corruption? We can't hear it up to now. But Mr. Moderator, the, the, the member of the panel made a statement that why is it that the company came to the government? Any government in the world is a facilitator of growth and development. Any proactive private sector would go after any opportunities that the government create. And I would encourage Mr. Gerard, and he himself went after a lot of opportunities that government would have created as a private sector uh, participant. And that is all natural. But let me say Really? This. Can you clarify let, let that statement, this. Minister Ali? Yeah, for example, uh, mm -hmm. you, you, went, you had certain skills, claimed certain skills in the repair of German uh, trucks mm -hmm. and you went uh, to, to the Ministry of Public Works mm -hmm. to, to, to do the contract there. Anyway, we're not getting to that. We're dealing with the airport. Well, I would have a right to respond there, please, yes. Mr. Crichton. Yes. Yes. You allow him to make the allegation. Yes, you will. Let Thank me you. say this. Okay. Let me say this. No, it's not an allegation, a statement of fact. Let me say this, that the airport, as I said, was always on the agenda. Here is it that, and he said that the manner of procurement, up to now I'm still listening to, hey, to uh, as a what was the manner of procurement that he's referring to. This is a situation there was no competitive where process, you have Minister a Ali. company, there's a various form of competition. I'll tell you what is competitive. Mm -hmm. Here is it that you have a company that is not only building the airport, but a company that is, has within its costs the design of that new facility. The design of any facility of this nature is between eight to ten million dollars. The industry standard for the development of the runway that we are developing is between uh, two hundred and twenty-five dollars to three hundred dollars per square foot. We are paying uh, in this contract a hundred and ninety dollars, far below the industry standard. Here is a situation: not only you are saving eight to ten million dollars on design. But the company came in at 181 million. Not the cabinet, a team of technical uh, of experts, technical people, met and negotiated over an entire year and brought down that figure from 181 million to 138 million, 183 million to 138 million, a saving of 43 million US Simple dollars. Simple question about being the proactive. Other, the other issue. Let me continue, please. Uh, uh, let, let me continue. Here is it that you have a financing agree uh, arrangement. Because, and this is a state-owned company. This is not a private company you went and pluck out of the air. This is a anything. company a owned by the government of China. It is a state-owned company. And Mr. Webster was sharing some information that the parent company is, is in, the, in the top, in the five, Fortune, Fortune 500. 500. Fortune the parent company <laughs> is in the Fortune 500 companies. Now, what is the financing arrangement? You're talking about 20 years, 20 years repayment, five years grace period. So you're talking about the total repayment of, a, uh, of this loan of $185 million from this mechanism. If you were to go the commercial way at, at a minimum of 10%, you're talking about uh, a, a pay, pay, 
of three hundred eighty, three hundred and thirty-eight million dollars. Three hundred and thirty-eight million dollars compared to one hundred and eighty-eight million dollars. That is the difference you're talking about. That is the cost savings you're talking about. That is the type of competitive environment that brings back direct benefit to the people and savings to the people of Guyana. Okay. Now, just start, again another reminder that um, we're going to ask you to keep your interventions brief and to the point. Um, we only have a limited time on the program and five Can minutes. I just say So that um, I, I wanted to invite Mr. Gear, and then I did promise 